guys. My name is Scott from the Freyan channel. Scott Aromatico. Welcome to the channel. I'm so glad to have you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Man, I'm super excited, guys. My heart is racing. My heart's pounding because I have a very special guest to me. He's one of the first content creators I listened to when I got in the fragrance game. And I'm super excited to have him. It's none other than Max Forte, guys. Let me tell you a little bit about Max. You can say hi, Max, real quick, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build you up here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, pleasure to be here. It's Scott Aromatico. Stuff that you're doing by bringing people together that's what it's all about man so max let me read a little bit about what i know about you and then you can fill in the blanks and then i'll ask your first question so i've got some notes here because it's kind of a mile long so max is the creator of a successful youtube channel named max forte where your slogan is make a great impression hashtag perfume lovers max you're the founder of scent explore right that's correct Scent Explore is something that I created. It's my, uh, it's my creation, absolutely. <laughs> and I know you also have your own podcast called Max Forte Chat. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts as well. Um, Emporium of Scents is your, fra uh, is your fragrance group on Facebook, right? That's correct. Yes, it's, okay. been, it's been going on for going on five years now, and we're up to 24,000 plus members. Absolutely. Well, we keep it clean. I just want to let, let people know that we don't tolerate nonsense or bullying, uh, you know, computer warriors, you know, we, we, we kick people out. Uh, your first warning is if we delete your post, if you do it again, you're, you're completely banned and, and we don't care. It's not about numbers. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. We want to make sure the group is friendly and it's, you know, accepting and inviting and it's, it's helpful and not, uh, you know, about arrogance or, or rudeness. So we, we keep it clean. Excellent. Excellent. And I, I love it. I love going on there and talking for with some of the other enthusiasts. And I know that you also have maxforte.com. Um, your slogan is what truly moves you, where, where what truly moves you, um, which is a cool little channel to go to, to, you know, to get inspired and to find some fragrances that, you know, people that might be right for them. So, and then I know you also have a huge presence on Instagram as well. And you're also on LinkedIn. What am I missing? <laughs> you, got, you got everything. Absolutely. And in fact, the maxforte.com uh, website is a little bit of a hiatus for the past year. Not much has gone on. I'm okay. revamping that website. So very soon I'm going to, you know, kind of link everything in, into there and give people some special nuggets if they go into the maxforte.com. So that's coming up in another three weeks or so. I'm working on that. Awesome. Awesome. And so you got a lot going on. You are a busy man. <laughs> yeah. I like to stay busy. I think when you're busy, it avoids a lot of problems because if you're always working, you're always working on something and helping people, you, you stay away from trouble that way. All right. Um, so if you would, Max, could you please tell the audience a little bit about yourself? You know, whatever you're willing to share, where you grew up, where you're currently living. Are you married? Do you have kids? Where did you go to college? Um, and what do you have a job? You know, things like that. Absolutely. I work in finance. Very boring job. It's uh, based on the writing uh, finance department, which is not my passion. My passion lies in fragrances, as I've been, you know, an avid collector since, you know, early teenage years. Um, my background is a little bit of a, bit of a mix, you know, it's, uh, you know, half Italian, uh, Lebanese, Syrian, and half uh, Portuguese and Spanish. Wow. So a little bit of everything, I guess you could say, uh, good old mutt. <laughs> you know, that's pretty much it, you know, and then, you know, been doing this for uh, going on almost a decade now on, 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 on social media, you know, started on YouTube and moved into Instagram and Facebook and, and Scent Explore was born in uh, 2019. So, yeah. Awesome. Been, uh, is it is it true that one of your first words as a child was perfume? That is true. Uh, my mother, I don't remember. Obviously, I was a few months old, but my mother said, you know, aside from Dada and, and Mama, she said uh, perfume was <laughs> one of the one of the first words that I, that I would say because uh, she used to um, when she used to clean me, you know, with talcum powder and all that stuff. She used to wear this lavender thing that she used to, to put around my, my ears and it would calm me, you know? Yes. Yeah. I always would ask for that. Like I would always go like that with my arms and, and ask for that perfume, perfume. Like I, I would, you know, so I guess the obsession started at a very young age and I was months old, not even a year old, maybe like eight, nine months old. So yeah. And then I remember, you know, five, six, seven years old, always wanting to steal sprays from my father, whether it was, you know, Paco Rabanne per Ohm or Zara per Ohm. You know, I always wanted to wear the, the strong stuff because I realized early on the, the power that these little, you know, potions had on people. And I, I just fell in love with them. You know, <laughs> you were born to do this. <laughs> um, what was that one thing, or maybe it was a series of events that 
led you to becoming a fragrance enthusiast, if you could just tell us. Sure. So there was a funny story when I was about seven years old. I was, I think, in first grade. And I, my father bought a gift set, which had, uh, you know, a full bottle, an aftershave, uh, and I think it had a little deodorant and it had like a mini and it was for a Zara prom. And I remember he gave me the little mini and I wore the whole mini at one sitting. I just poured the whole thing on me and I went to class and it was so pungent, so strong, like the original formulation of a Zara prom. So I was removed from class. The teacher said, Hey, you have to stay out here. For I was almost sent home, but then after a couple hours, it, it, you know, tamed down a little bit and I was, you know, invited back in class. So that was very intriguing to me to see the reaction that it had on people, you know, that, wow, you know, it can be good, but it also could be bad, but it was also something that triggered my brain. I said, wow, these fragrances are something that I really want to understand and, and, and learn more about. And, you know, ever since I can remember seven, eight, nine years old, I always wore something and my, my friends in school, elementary school, middle school would not dare think about wearing fragrance. And I was already wearing fragrances. I remember I wore, uh, English leather, I think was one of them. Uh, Sterling, which is an old, old mm, yes. chaps from Ralph Lauren. So yeah, I wore a lot of those old school fragrances that my father was wearing back then. And I would just, you know, steal sprays or whatever. <laughs> uh, just, just loved it. And and the fougere, I think is, is, is something that I'm very passionate about because I think it was my first experience was the fougere. So it's near and dear to my heart. That makes sense. That makes sense. Journey on YouTube, uh, started, um, because I joined a couple of Facebook groups, including uh, the Fragrance Guru Nation back in 2010, I want to say. Wow. And I started watching reviews around 2007. Uh, and back then you had three people doing it. You had uh, uh, Cubby, which I think was Fragrance Talk, his YouTube handle. We had Katie Puckrick a couple of years later. And then we had, uh, uh, obviously, Mark Rubs08, um, which was pretty much like the three main channels that I watched. And a whole bunch of people started, you know. Wow. But for the, for the longest time, like the first, you know, from 2007 to 2012, right around 2011, 2012, you had really no more than a dozen channels. You know, uh, things didn't really take off until post Jeremy, I think around 2014, when he came to the scene because of the way he engaged and, and you know, because he kind of like really interacted with social media algorithms so eloquently, he was able to really grow and, and gave this fragrance community of ours, a nice impulse, a nice push. And now it's what we see now, which is like, you know, we, we grew leaps and bounds. I can't even fathom how many reviewers are there today, which is something that I'm, I'm looking to do. I want to, I want to come up with a database just, just like we have for Grantic. I want to have like a database. So we know bloggers and reviewers. So we have access to an alphabetized, you know, list of everyone because it's kind of hard to know. And I think it would be cool, you know, to do something like that. It's something I'm trying to incorporate now. Yeah, I think uh, at scent, the last Scent Explorer, I know you were doing some things with some apps. I just wondered if you, were you still doing anything with that as well? I am. That's through Mosk Milano. Uh, yeah. Okay. Alessandro, the, the, you know, the owner of Mosk Milano is actually the creator of that app. We're trying to work out a partnership so that we can continue to develop that. Uh, there's a, a few if, ends, and, and buts in between that we're trying to overcome before it becomes, you know, something that's prevalent and, and prominent. But you know, it's working stages at this point. Well, yeah. So, so you're watching, you know, other fragrance enthusiasts and other content creators, but it's, it's not as simple as that. What, what kind of pushed you over the top? Cause it takes a lot of bravery and guts to talk to a camera with no one on the other end. So what pushed you over to start making the content? You're absolutely right. Uh, because in the beginning, I don't know if you remember this, but if people watch, cause I never delete anything. Me either. Journey grows in every step of the way, you know, your taste changes. I mean, I remember things that I tried uh, back in 2010, 2011 that I didn't like and even hated, got rid of it and bought again. So you, you, you <laughs> do change as well as your journey as, as you know, if anyone you look, anyone that's really big now, if you go back years ago and watch how they did, you know, you get better as, as you do it. The, the, they, they, you know, the rule of 10,000 hours, if you do something over and over again, you, you tend to be a good at least decent at what you're doing. So I remember that in the beginning, I wouldn't even show my face. I worked with a, with a, it was a marble chess board that I had and it was pretty wow. based in the fragrance. If you go to my channel and you go old videos, you're going to see, yeah. I didn't show my face 
2012, 11, uh, 12, 13, 14. So not until I think around 2015, I started to show my face. So it took a few years before wow. I could people, you know, talking to a camera. Um, and a lot of people that knew me outside YouTube would say, hey, man, I think you'd be fine. Just do it. You know, bite the bullet. Yeah. And my wife uh, is the one that really, um, you know, encouraged me to, to do it. In fact, I have to thank her a lot because even the Facebook group was her idea. Uh, the Instagram page was her idea. So I, I couldn't have done it without her. Like the pictures, it's, it, she's the one who takes it. So, you know, I, I, it's not, a, it's not a, as much as a one-man show. It's, I mean, she, she's really great, great help. Well, thank her for us because we're glad she, she helped push you. <laughs> Absolutely. Did you, um, when you first got started, did you find it difficult to share your passion because sometimes you can see over, you can seem like you're overboard because you walk into your room and there's like 200 fragrances on your dresser. And, you know, there's this stigma of being in the beauty market, you know, that it's not very manly and stuff. So did you find it hard to share your enthusiasm for fragrances in the beginning? Not so much on that end because I'm very comfortable with, with who I am, but awesome. really being comfortable on camera, you know, because people are very judgmental and, you know, we all hear about cyber bullying and uh, yeah, you know, yeah. warriors and, you know, we, we all had our shares. I mean, you know, I had my shares of, of people trying to knock me down, whatever. And, and what I, you know, say to people when they come to me and ask me, you know, how do you overcome that? You mm. just come by not feeding into it. You know, if someone's being rude to you, if they're being mean to you, don't even, you know, recognize it. Don't even, you know, give them the time of day, just delete and move on. If they continue to try to harass you, just, just, you know, just ban them from your channel, just block them because that's what they want. You know, most of the time these people are in a miserable place. So they're trying to draw you in, they're trying to bring you down to their level and you don't have to sink to that level. You just keep positive, keep moving forward, help people, you know, because when we help people, that's the biggest reward we can get because when you make somebody feel good, you feel good. So it's like, it's like a chain, like, like a ripple effect. Everybody benefits from it. So yeah, I just kept moving. I kept going, kept moving forward. Um, you know, and, and things have changed. The algorithms have changed in a way that I'm sure you see that, you know, I may discover a fragrance that I love so much that I want to bring to light, but most of the time you kind of have to figure out the right way to bring that fragrance to light. Because if you do a standalone review, most, most of the time, it's not going to get much, you know, interaction. It's not going to get much views. But the top videos is what people want. People want to know, you know, the top videos or the best discoveries or, you know, if it's a best video or a top video, you're going to get good interaction. That's kind of like how the algorithms is. It's, it's not me or you. It's how YouTube is structured now. So, you know, you even look at guys like Jeremy producing, you know, three to four videos a day. It's really about quantity. It's really about, you know, producing a lot of content. You know, the more you do, quote unquote, the better. But I'm still true to that, you know, quality versus quantity. I, I, I've, you know, I've been doing three videos per week for the past, I think, four and a half years now. And, and that's the formula that I like. It works. And I don't want to be overkill. I don't want to do more of the same, you know. So I like what I do. I, I try to mix it up a little bit. You know, not every video is going to be a top video, but I try to mix it in there. And I think that Monday, Wednesday and Friday, you know, structure works for me, you know, so I keep it. I think it is working for you based the last time I saw your, uh, your subscribers. <laughs> um, what is your favorite part about being a content creator? I think it always goes back to, to what I said. It's really, you know, being helpful, making a difference. You know, I think everything we do in life, we should aspire to, to, to make a difference, you know, as, as little as it can be, you know, um, sometimes, you know, people just need a good word, you know, if they're looking for something and you make them feel better. I mean, I mean, we wear fragrances. Why? Because it makes us feel good. It makes us feel better. Uh, it's something that gives us emotions. It gives us something to look forward to uh, memories of things we love or people we love. So that's what it's all about. It's all about, you know, coming up with, with ideas and ways to, to make people feel better about themselves, to empower them. And I think that's the best. And then the connections that you make, you know, the, the, the connections that you make through the years, whether it be people from brands that I know or perfumers or creative directors or people like yourself uh, or people that follow me and, you know, people are, you know, in my group on, on the Facebook group, just connecting, you know, people and, and just making people feel good about themselves and, you know, bringing happiness to the world. Like I said, even if it's a drop, it's still better than nothing, you know? So that's right. if everyone's pulling in the same direction, you know, we're going to make a difference. And I always say the fragrance community is just now from like the past six years or seven years, really 
uh, growing exponentially. When you look at the community from 2007 to 2013, 14, it was a very, very tiny niche. It's still small compared to the whole YouTube gamut of, 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 of topics. But we now, if you think about it, we now are official part of fashion and style because you look at big, big guys like Alpha M, like uh, Real Men Real Style, like Jose Zuniga, all these guys that have millions of followers talking about fragrances, releasing fragrances. So they realize the power that we have, you know, and I always say the community is a lot stronger than it gives, gives credit for. And I think the moment we stop to look at little petty things and try to like nitpick and, and hurt each other, the moment we get stronger together, like those guys do with like the influentials that they come up with, you know, we could do more events like Scent Explore to bring the community together. Then we're really going to be a force to be reckoned with. And, and I look forward to those days. Yeah, what you're saying is true, because when I first you know got involved, you know, Jeremy was the one I saw. But then right after Jeremy, the next person that came up for a fragrance video was Alex Costa. So, you know, and I know he's made his, you know, his lane is mainly fashion. And so you're what you're saying is right on. Um, what's your least favorite thing about being a content creator? I know we talked about the trolls and the negative commenters. Is that is that probably your least favorite thing about it? That is one of the top, for sure. But I think uh, the grind is, is rough because when you look back, you know, when I started watching the stuff 2007, 2008, some of these guys, I mean, most of those guys were doing maybe one video per week or once, once every other week or every two weeks. So you didn't have to be as consistent as you have to be now, you know, now yeah. because of the algorithms and because of there's so many people doing it. If you want to stay afloat, if you want to stay relevant, you have to produce content mm -hmm. constantly. You have to do it. You know, you, you got to do it, number one constantly. You have to do also things that are relevant, things that people want. You know, I could yes. talk about, you know, Anik Gutau. I can talk about Serge Lutans. I can talk about, you know, L'Artisan Perfume. I can talk about a lot of these hidden jam brands. But if I don't talk about it in the right context, it's not going to make an impact because mm -hmm. number one, it's designers, which is going to, you know, pull the most views. It's top videos. It's videos that in include women, you know, like beautiful women, given their opinions. There, there, there's a formula to this madness. And if you abide by those formulas, you'll be able to do okay. You'll be able to stay afloat. So that grind sometimes can be rough just because, I'm not just on YouTube, but I'm also on Instagram, like you said. I also have a, a group that I that I that I that I run. I have Scent Explore that takes half of my year to put together, at least like about five six months to structure it right. So it's the grind, you know. It's like what's yeah, the, that makes sense. Constant. I mean, I'll show you my planner, which is which is the craziest craziest looking thing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh man, and, all fra all fragrances, right? Well, this is my, 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 my regular fragrance planner. And then I have a, a business planner, which is a lot more structural, a lot more neater and cleaner. But this is my, my fragrance stuff that has to do with all the different, you know, platforms. So each one of those highlighters has to do with either, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or podcast. So the grind, I think the grind of having to produce week in and week out, it takes a huge toll. And you have to be willing to sacrifice family time, you know, uh, yeah. to Dude, I know it's no joke, you know. No, yeah, I, I completely get it. And yeah, so I'm sure there's two different kinds of people. There's those who are just having fun, and if you're just having fun and you don't care if you grow, then put out one. But but if you're trying to reach people because you like the interaction and you like changing lives, like you were just talking about, then you gotta play with the algorithm because that's what helps you reach the lives. So exactly, and that's what Scott, you know, there are guys here that are, you know, they liked the old, you know, community. And they don't really like how the community is now. And, and that's fine. You know, you have all the rights not to like something. But what I say to people is don't watch it. Don't watch it. Don't, uh, don't give, you know, us the time of day. If you don't like my content or Jeremy content, that's okay. You know, you can produce your own or you can watch whatever you want. You know, yeah. but I think what's destructive sometimes is when people get out of their, their zone or their lane to try to step on people to make themselves look good. I think that that shows and says a lot about their characters because that's something you're never going to find me doing, Scott. I'll never get out of my, you know, seat to try to step on somebody's neck or to try to, you know, put somebody down. If they're doing something wrong, it's on them. It's going to catch up to them. I don't have to to be the police of the, the community to like try to put them down to make me look good. I think that's that's not the right thing to do. You know, let live and let live. It's going to yeah. catch up to them. If they're doing something wrong, 
they'll, they'll pay the price sooner than later. You hit the nail right on the head, and you can't disregard what Jeremy has done for the community. Good, bad. No. I'm not going to agree with everything he says and does. Of course, no. Not. No morals and values, but the fact that he brought the community to a, you know, a, a plateau, he brought it to a stratosphere that it would have taken us maybe a decade to get to. And, and because of his reach, you know, he got us there. Now everybody benefits from this. Everybody's winning. Everybody, I agree. If you want to do well, you can ride this. Yeah. But if you just want to sit there and criticize, then that's the choice you make, you know, and I agree with you. You have to give credit where it's due. And to me, what sums it up is live and let live. If you don't like the gentleman, if you don't like whoever, don't watch them, move on, create your own content and, and, and live your life. You know, you don't exactly. have, to, have to consume that, that, uh, that product, you know, but, but don't critique those that are, you know, you, you know, better than anybody, you know, everybody's like you said, every, we all have flaws, you know, uh, we can't judge who are, who are yeah. we, judge, you know, exactly. Okay. So somebody's going to watch this video and they see the conversation and they're like, wow, that Max guy, amazing. They're inspired and they're going to start their own channel. What's the best piece of advice you would give them on their way to starting their channel? I think we talked about a lot of that stuff here today, Scott. I think uh, believe in yourself. Uh, don't be afraid to speak your word, to come up with your own little elements, your own little series, your own little twist on things. Um, you know, be creative, uh, be courageous. Don't be afraid of, of the negative Nellies and the people that are going to take <laughs> you. Uh, like I said, ignore them, move past it, you know, let it roll off your back. Uh, look for people that are supportive, you know, look, I mean, they more than welcome to reach out to me, reach out to you. I'm sure you're, 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 you're going to, you know, accommodate people. And yes. I get question asked all the time, you know, Hey, I'm going to start my channel, Max, what would you, and that's the same thing I say all the time. You know, why are you doing it? Ask yourself, number one question, why are you doing this? You're doing this because you're truly passionate about fragrance because that's how I started. I was really, really passionate and I'm still am. I mean, you look behind me, there's over 2000 bottles and a lot of people say, oh, you know, you guys do it because you get free bottles. Guess what? I didn't get a free bottle until 2015, you know, and, and I was into this, you know, since I was like a teenager, 14, 15 years old. So there's bottles in, in this collection here that are older than me. So more than 95% of this collection was bought by me. So the money spent here over the years, I could have bought two houses, you know, so <laughs> Be, be, be true to yourself. Make sure you are passionate about what you're doing. You know, it doesn't even have to be fragrance. Whatever channel you want to start, make sure you are true. You know, I watch other channels too. I watch music channels because I'm a guitar player. I watch watch channels because I love watches. You know, I love sports like, you, like yourself. <laughs> so I watch other people and I, you have to have passion because they're going to see that. You know, whoever's watching you, it's going to come through, you know. And one thing is when they watch me, when I'm doing a, a five, 10, 15 minute video, one thing, when you talk to me face to face, you know, I only have 10, 15 minutes to convey a message. But when you talk to me, like we're talking now, I have a little bit more freedom to talk. I, I love the lives, uh, Scott, because I like the raw aspect of life. You know, mm -hmm. when you, watch, you make a mistake, you know, you can make a mistake. So you're more susceptible to make that mistake because you're going to stop and you're going to record again. You're going to edit. This is raw. I have to really watch myself. I have to, or not. You know, I could be myself if I'm upset with something. I can say, hey, man, I didn't appreciate that, you know. Mm -hmm. And that is why a lot of people don't have the guts to do it live. They rather come out and just leave their little comments like keyboard warriors because it's easier that way. They're hiding behind that, that mask, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, be true to yourself. Make sure you believe in what you're talking about, what you're trying to convey, because a lot of people are going to listen to you. And, um, you know, love what you do, love what you do and, and, you know, come up and show up and you're going to have to show up if you want to really make a difference because, and I think Antonio Santino from Real Men Real Style said that to me uh, the other day when, when he came to my podcast, he said very, very eloquently, he said, you cannot copy people. There's only one Jeremy Fragrance. There's only one Antonio Santino. There's only one Max, Max Forte. There's only one Scott Aramatico. So be yourself, bring something to the table that's unique to you you know, and find your niche, find, find what really, like I always say, find what really moves you. And then you will move other people too. I that's think, right. You know, and just, just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep yeah, showing. That's right. I, I love to draw. And if I never got paid to draw, I'd still keep on doing it because I love it. It's the same with the fragrances. And one more thing I want to say, if those people that complained about getting free bottles knew how much work it takes to make a YouTube video, they wouldn't complain that you got it. <laughs> They have no clue how much work it takes. That is such a perfect point. I mean, it takes literally, <laughs> I don't know how long it takes for you, but 
any given video I do, it's between two to four hours. Yes. Just between the recording, the editing, the thumbnail, the tags, you know, description. I mean, it, it's promoting it, it on the different fragrance groups and promoting it on Instagram and interact. Yeah. I, mean, I, I answer my when people comment, I answer the comments. So all that hours of your day. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what's that? What's that one thing you'd like to clear up that you think people have this idea of what it's like to be a content creator? Do you have that one thing that you want to clear up about it? You know, I think people, have, you know, have you ever thought of that? Before you say that, I just want to say something real quickly just came to me. Uh, aside from the time that it takes to make a video, people are, are now, because it's coming to light that people are understanding how much it actually costs for these companies to come up with these fragrances. You know, the cost between a bottle of fragrance, any company, I'm saying this across the board and, and with no fear in, in my mind here. I know for a fact because I've seen numbers and I've talked to companies and I, and I have access to numbers. It's anywhere between 3 to $30 per bottle no matter what company, the biggest or the smallest, that is the cost. So you got to think if it's going to take me three to four hours to produce a video, is my time only worth about 20, 30 bucks? You know, yeah. <laughs> so that's something to think about. And I think because the community is understanding that a little more, people are starting to understand that, you know, there has to be something because you understand companies, they're reaching out to us because the social media platforms are our marketing. This is how they, they connect. You know, brick and mortar stores are a thing of the past. With the whole pandemic, everything is done online. So more and more marketing, merchandising, sales are done online. So that's what we do. You know, there, there's a, you don't have to hate the player. You know, you hate the game, but you have to play the game or you have to walk away. Those are the only choices we have. You yeah, know? awesome. Yeah, that, that's a great point. I, I remember Jeremy doing a, a video on that about how much it actually costs you know, with the bottles and the juice and all that. And I was like, oh my God. Cause I've heard that rumor a long time ago about sneakers. Like some sneakers only cost, you know, anywhere from a dollar to three bucks to make. And then there's a hundred percent markup on them. You know, same with furniture. Furniture can be 300% to on up on markup. And um, so if they only knew. <laughs> the people, Scott, is always try not to pay retail because retail is, is, is ridiculous. And it's it's really a thing of the past when you think about it, because now the knowledge is so in light. People understand what it takes, to, you know, the cost between things and and how to get it out there. And at the end of the day, if, you, if you're buying retail, you're paying three to four people, you know, um, you know. And that's when the discount websites come into place. That's why I'm a partner with, with, with FragranceBuy.ca because I love them. I was a, a, a customer of theirs for two and a half years and I've been working with them going on four years now. So, you know, I'm going to bring people what I believe is the best. Good customer service, good pricing, great selection. It's that simple. It's what I'm looking for is what I want to give to, to you guys. Awesome. That's simple. Awesome. How did Sun Explorer, uh, how was that born? So Synth Explore, uh, Mark Mobley uh, was my partner with MyFragranceSamples.com, which is a decant shop, uh, which I have also promoted on my, on my channel for many years. Uh, we were a little bit of a hiatus right now. We're trying to structure things and, and think about whether or not we're going to continue to work together. But it was my intellectual property and idea to bring the community together because it's something I've been trying to do for many years. In fact, if you look at one of the videos uh, which we had the debate uh, at Scent Explore 2019, the first annual, and Carlos, Brooklyn fragrance lover, God bless his soul, you know, he's yeah, not with yeah. us. He said it because I've always wanted to put something together like this, and I did it in a smaller scale with Scents with a Z in 2017, but I wanted to do something really big to really bring the, you know, the whole concept is to bridge the community, you know, fragrance aficionados worldwide and the brands and, and the bloggers and content creators. It's, it's all under one roof. That, that's like mm -hmm. the whole thing. Amen. So <laughs> I, I asked Mark if he would help me put it together. I laid out everything that I needed to do. And I told him, hey, can you handle these things? And I'll handle the thick of it. And he's like, yes, let's do it. Let's let's, let's give it a try. And it was very successful. Uh, last year, we couldn't do it in person because of COVID. We did it virtually, which was also very successful. The first year we had wow, about- So good. Yeah, we had 600 and something people the first year. The second year, we had about 1,200 people. So it's going. It's definitely going up. It was awesome. And this year, you know, we're looking to do some other unique things. Every year, I'm going to try to bring something a little unique, something a little different, just to make it better and better. But yeah, that, that that's how it was born. It was it was a way to, to have, because I always looked at France and Italy. They always had these conventions. It's like, why can't we have something in America where, where this is the biggest and the best market? So we're due to have something for North America or the Americas. And, yeah. and hence the fact that, you know, Scent Explorer was born. So yeah. 
we're looking so to- so worth the so worth the money I, I didn't even look at it like spending i looked at it like an investment my mind was blown and i learned so much and learned about so many brands i didn't even know about and i was laughing i was you know I, it was it was awesome so anyway <laughs> that was awesome did you, did you come to the first event or no I didn't come to the first one. I came to, to the past one that was virtual. I wish I could have come to the first one. Um, I saw one of the pictures from the first one and uh, all those people are superstars. This year, we're going to have to keep it virtual again, but okay. 22, cr- cross, fingers crossed, we'll be able to do it in person again. We'll keep the virtual for people around the world, but having that, that, that physical element of meeting up and, you know, I, wanna, I want that to keep going. And unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we, we, we had to put a, a hold on that. Yeah, as soon as I find out that you guys you know are doing it live again, I'll I'll be sure to to go to it because uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait to meet you in person. Yeah, it'll be awesome. Hey, let's uh let's go ahead and get out of some of this um you know more serious stuff and let's do the fun part of it and then get you on your way and and uh, to your weekend. All right. Sounds good. So so the first thing I'm going to ask you is, and I know everybody's dying to know, what's your scent of the day? <laughs> So today I'm wearing a Costume National Ohm Parfum 2020 release. In fact, uh, I just uh, edited that, which will be populating this coming Monday. Um, I was a huge fan of the original, which was introduced in 2009. So it took them about a decade to bring this this flanker. Uh, and Costume National is a company that I tell people all the time. I keep it in the hush. I don't talk much about it because it's one of my secrets. But you know, now I'm talking about it. It's a great little brand. Kind of like Comme des Garçons, kind of like Social Tons, you know, not really talked about, but very worth it. You know, yeah. this one is incredible, very unique stuff. You know, I'll, I'll have to look into that if you don't mind. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite fragrance uh, content creator right now, or do you watch anybody that you really enjoy? It doesn't have to be one person. But first, I want to know what you're wearing today. Oh, I'm wearing the new uh, 2021 Tom Ford Costa Azura. Oh, very nice. That's a great. Yeah, one. yeah. I I sampled the um the old one, and I had I do a lot of samples before I buy, and I sampled the old one, and I had it for a while, and I kept looking for the old bottle because I like the old bottle, but I couldn't find it anywhere, so I finally had to break down and get the twenty twenty one. So, yeah. Yeah, they discontinued the old bottles, and I they saw that they released it on this uh, signature collection. But you asked me about my favorite review content creators currently, uh, just fragrance or overall. Yeah, just fragrance since we're talking about. You know, there are many great content creators and, and it goes back and harps back to what we talked about. It's really finding a person that you resonate with, somebody you have affinity with, you like their style, you like their personality. Um, I mean, I, I look at everyone's stuff at, at some point, you know, now being so busy, I can't really watch. Uh, okay. But I really want to give light to up and coming reviewers such as yourself. I mean, there's great ones. You can't deny. I mean, they, they got to the point that they're at because they did something that's relevant and something that was good. You know, you can't, you know, you can't overlook people from the past, the golden era, you know, the, the Drac docs and, and the L from, from street sense, you know, Mark rubs 08, um, you know, cubby. Uh, there was a guy that I watched, which was the King of hype way before Jeremy, uh, which, um, was called his channel hand, his handle was, uh, Miguel, uh, hero, Zuka, which was, uh, you know, such a great channel he hyped stuff up and he got me into a lot of niche stuff and then of course you had this the people that came over the past few years the jeremy the jensen's uh you know mm-hmm. Carlos, steven all great guys but you know i really want the community to grow in a way that you have to you know i'm, I'm not going to look to do this for the rest of my life so you always want to pass the baton so you want to look for new talent for people that are up and coming you know yeah. especially when it comes to ladies you know because when you think yes. about most of the, the, the predominant channels, with exception of like Curly Sense or, or Demi Rawl and Just the Rose, there's a couple of them, thank God, that are coming up. But it was mostly guys that were on top. So, you know, I really want to shed some light on some of the new and up and coming talent like, you know, Clemence from France, um, Just the Rose, uh, you know, Fragmental UK, Mr. Smelly 77. I mean, those, those are all guys that I, that I look up and I watch their stuff and, you know, and there's a lot of guys that are, are doing a great job. Again, it's different niches. You know, uh, yeah. there's that kid from England too, which which is very funny, very insightful. Um, uh, the fragrance apprentice George. Mm-hmm. So there, there's a lot of great little channels. Frag, frag, is it fragmental? I think he's pretty good. 
Fragmental UK, I, I talked about. That's Chris, but I'm talking about uh, the Fragrance Apprentice. His name is George Atkins. At he's really good too. But again, it's it's all different niches. It's you know whatever you like, whatever you're more comfortable with, whoever you like to watch, or you can watch everybody. Just you know, take the best of you know with a grain of salt and come up with your own little uh, you know. It, I always say your nose will never lie. You know, if you smell yeah. something, you know. And again, I have people that come to me, hey, Max, I've been, you know, following your channel for over five years and I love your, your, your smell. When you tell something's good, I go and I search for it because, you know, we have very similar tastes. That's OK. You know, but even at that point, you're not going to love everything I love. It's just not, no. gonna happen, you know, no. but um, yeah, I mean, not a one size, it's not a one size fits all. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a video soon uh, highlighting some of the best channels that I watched in the past and maybe my current top 10, awesome. and 10 channels that I want to grow. Maybe that would be like a little series that I might do, you know, highlighting some other people. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, that kid, Dallas, for only being 21, man, he's got his act together. Chaos Fragrance. Chaos Fragrances, yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. Right? All right. Um, what's your favorite designer house? You can pick three. Oh, it's easy. Christian Dior, hands down. Christian Dior is your favorite? Awesome. Okay, how about your favorite niche house, hands down? That gets a little bit tough. <laughs> but you know, it's funny because it's not going to be any of the main players. It's going to be okay. a toss between L'Artisan Parfumé, not now, but what they did before. All, all three companies, not what they're doing now, but the stuff that I have from them, which is old school, vintage, like the best. I'm telling you, L'Artisan, I call this the, the triple crown. L'Artisan Perfumé, uh, Anique Gautel, and Serge Lutens. Find stuff from these guys 2010 and before. Like, nothing better. Amazing niche stuff. Uh, off the cuff question, just thought of it. I struggle with so many names. Were you always good at saying the names, or did you take the time to learn it? <laughs> Absolutely not. I don't speak French. I speak a few languages, but French is definitely not one of them. Uh, of course, I do my research. Uh, you know, uh, you could go to Google Translate and, and hear the, the, you know, the, the actual enunciation, pronunciation, but you still struggle. You know, French is, is a hard language. Uh, it's a beautiful language, but, you know, I try my hardest. But, you know, again, um, we're not teaching a class. We're not teaching French, yeah. we're teaching Italian. You know, we're, we're talking fragrance. So no one's teaching anything because we're always learning. We're just yeah. a vessel. We're a channel. We're, we're a, you know, a vessel to transmit that information that we love and share with everyone else. No one's teaching anything. We're not, you know, if someone is, 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 is hitting their chest and said, I'm the best and I'm, you know, I, I would scratch my head a little bit because we're all learning here, you know, and yeah, that's yeah. passing on information. That's all. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. House is on fire. You, you get your kids out, you get your family out but you can only save one of those bad boys behind you. Just one. Which one are you saving? Probably Pateau Pome, which is a 1981 vintage uh, bottle that I got a couple years ago, I think five years ago. And I paid, I think it was a little over 500 bucks for it. Wow. And it's very hard to find. Now they're, they're, they're over a thousand bucks if you can find it. So wow. probably grab that real quickly. Uh, you know, put it in the pocket and run. Uh, not 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 meant to stump you, but what is this? Is just came to my head curiosity. What is one of the most expensive fragrances out there? Do you know? I mean, that you could do research on that, but I'll be honest okay. with you, I don't think the most expensive fragrances out there are going to be the best. I think it's, it's no, no, I don't think so either. I was just curious, just for curiosity's sake, what was it would be but, marketing, uh, marketing gimmicky at that point, you know? Yeah, um, I know Clive Christian is up there pretty high, and some of those other and they're not the best, um, trust me. <laughs> I've never got my nose on it, so I'll, I'll trust you. Um, okay, so how many? I think you mentioned a little bit way back in the video you had a bunch of fragrances. What was that number again? I think of as of right now because I, I keep my fragrances in th three different spots. This room I cannot comport all of them, so I think I'm around a little over two thousand at this point. Wow. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. Other than fragrances, what are some of your other passions and hobbies? I love uh, soccer. Uh, it's one of my passions for sure. Uh, played it as a kid, played in college. Um, I played as well. Uh, love to watch it professionally. Champions League, League, I love to watch it. World Cup, love to watch it. Me uh, too. Music is definitely one of my passions in life. I, 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 I can't be without music. I love classic rock, jazz. I mean, I wow. like everything. I listen to everything. Yeah. 
um, I think classic rock is really what I love the most. And, um, and watches, I think watches is another hobby that I have that, that I truly like, you know, it's something that I've always, there's a few watches that I've always wanted, you know, some of them I was able to get some I'm still working on, but it's definitely a passion of mine. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Zeppelin is one of my all time favorite bands in the world. So, um, let's see here. What is one thing people would be surprised to know about you? Uh, maybe that I can speak, read and write, uh, I think four languages. Well, well, that's why you're pretty good at pronouncing those names. <laughs> I think that helps. <laughs> um, what's your favorite movie? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, well, my favorite actor of all time would probably be Robert De Niro. Yeah. So maybe The Godfather, you know, something along those lines, like those old school, you know, kind of movies. I, I like those. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, he's 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 pretty tough. How about your favorite food? Uh, would probably be like Italian food. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's that's I love a good lasagna or a good ravioli. Um. Okay, so you said music, but who's who's some? You can name three or one, whatever you want to do. Who's some of your favorite bands? Oh, that's easy. Like the, the I I give you my top five of all time. Okay. The Beatles. Gotcha. Stones, like Rolling Stone. Yeah. Led Zeppelin. Yes. Uh, Genesis. Wow. And, and Pink Floyd. Okay, I didn't see Genesis coming, but yeah, love Phil Collins. <laughs> Um, all right. And so that, that's kind of the questions. I just wanted to ask you, is there anything that you wanted to say to close out, to promote, to talk about that's up and coming? Do you, I know a lot of content creators are, and I don't, excuse me if I don't know this, but do you have your own fragrance? A lot of people are promoting those right now. So what do you got going on? Not at all, Scott. And I say this all the time. People always ask me, Hey Max, when are you going to release your stuff? When are you going to have merch? You know, I'm not looking to do that stuff anytime soon, especially okay. with fragrance. Uh, if I ever do it, it's going to be done right. And most likely when I do release a fragrance line, I won't be reviewing anymore because I, I just, I feel it's a conflict of interest. Okay. Okay. You know, I, I, I don't think you should toot your own horn. I think the product should speak for itself. So I would only do it if it's done right. And I would like it to be something really unique and quality. Otherwise I won't do, it. I won't do dupes. I won't do something that's just more of the same. So until I know for a fact that I can make something that's going to be groundbreaking or really make an impact in, in the market, I will not touch it. I don't want it. So, awesome. Awesome. And as far as like promoting, uh, you know, just what I'm doing right now, just, you know, uh, I want to continue to do more and more. I'm not afraid of hard work. Uh, you know, I, I like to encourage people to get in touch with me if they think that they can help in any way, shape or form. If they think that I can help in any way, shape or form, please do reach out. Uh, I'm always looking for people that are talented, for people that are creative, for people that want to make a difference, be the difference. You know, um, what I do is, 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 is transparent. You know, I work with some of the companies that, you know, you know, you know, if I'm talking about fragrance by that's it, because I believe in them and I know that they're going to do what they're supposed to do. Because when I make those deals with them, I, I leave it very clear to them. I say, Hey, listen, I'm going to talk about you. You better do your job. Make sure you have good customer service. Make sure, make sure you have competitive prices because I'm putting my neck on the line for you. So that is understood from get go with whoever I work with. You know, if I promise something, Scott, I'm a man of my word, I will do it, you know, and I expect the same thing in return, you know, common courtesy, respect, and just, you know, stay behind your word. So, yeah, I mean, if anybody wants to reach out to, to make a difference, to, to do something that's productive, that's, that's constructive, that's going to be bringing the people together. Um, I'm always ready, willing, and able to listen and, and, and to help anybody and everybody. Thank you so much for doing this with me from the bottom of my heart. It's a huge honor. It means the world to me. I consider you, whether you do or not, one of the pillars of the fragrance community. And um, so to me, this was a big thrill and I was trying not to geek out and be a fanboy. So I hope I pulled that off. And so <laughs> someone I was leading up to this, I was so nervous. You can ask my wife, I was freaking out all day. So thank you so much for doing this. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Scott. You did fantastic, phenomenal job. You know, love the channel. I'm subscribed to your channel. And like I said, you know, on camera right now, anything you need from me, don't hesitate. Uh, reach out and, and I'll help you with anything I can. And uh, let's make a difference. Let's make this, this community a good community so people can look at it and say, wow, these guys are united. These guys, you know, really want to bring positive to this world. We need it. You know, with this pandemic and everything that's going on, we need to be the best versions of ourselves, which is, you know, really pouring positivity and bringing people together.